clouds of the rainbow So pretty in the sky Dogs in the faces The people walking by Eyes of friends shaking hands Say, how do you do? They really say, I love you I hear they cry I watch them grow They look much more Than I let them go And I think to myself Oh, what a wonderful world. Well, uh, thank you all so, so much for being here. And you have absolutely no idea what your presence here means to me. Because as you know, I'm launching my very first collection of poetry, which is called Scattered. So to start things off, uh, this young man over here will be accompanying me uh, throughout the evening. And I'm sure you will uh, actually prefer his singing to like listening to me and just jabber non-stop about my poetry and myself. So. His name is Shaman Ranavira and I'm sure he needs no introduction because he's like one of the ideal examples for uh, what kind of uh, musical talent is available in Sri Lanka today. Um, so, to start things off, I believe that every event should be marked with a beginning and I thought that the ideal beginning would be to light a lamp. So, this is symbolic of enlightenment as well as illumination and I could not think of anyone better than my own parents and my local Tata here to um, do this task today. So this is my very first book and my very first launch and just like they had uh, taught me to take my very first steps as a toddler when I was very small, today I would like them to take me by the hand and just lead me down this literary path. So, uh, if you would do me the honors.
this is like all these pieces in this book, they are quite spontaneous. I never had to actually sit myself down and say, right, okay, now I'm going to write poetry. I never had to do that. Words just flowed and, you know, what I just did was just scoop them up and just splash them onto paper. That's what I did. So, but publishing had been quite an adventure because uh, there were many incidents involved in it. Um, so when I was totally confused and everything, I, what I did was naturally I turned to Mrs. Vijla Fernando, who just guided me through the whole process. So um, in introduction to this collection, I would uh, like Mrs. Vijla Fernando to give a brief in introduction for it because she has read the book and I heard she has a lot of things to say about it. So we'll just see if she has to say. I accepted Diane's invitation to speak tonight with great pleasure as I saw the determination and the hard work she put into getting this collection published. I admire her for that single hearted effort and tonight I begin my brief comments about her book by congratulating Jai. I am not a poet but I am a lover of poetry. So what I am going to say is certainly not a critique of Jai's poems. But I will speak generally about poetry and not about what well-known and widely read poets have spoken about the power of poetry, nor about critical analysis of poems in general. What pleases me most about poetry such as Chinese is that they have broken away from the stereotypes and are far removed from the kind of poetry we read as students both at school and at university. Those poems made a lasting impression on us, though the situations, the places, and even their thoughts at times were completely alien to us. But, but who can forget Wordsworth's daffodils dancing in the breeze, though we had never seen his daffodils? or when we read Rupert Brooks' Grantchester, he asks, and will they have honey for tea? We take him at his word, though we never take honey with our tea. So we delighted in the sonnets of Shakespeare, shall I compare thee to a summer's day? And we delighted with Marvel's homage to his coy mistress. I thought I'd read a little bit of that. Had we but world enough and time, this coins, lady, were no crime. We would sit down and think which way to walk and pass our long love's day. Thou by the Indian Ganges side should rubies find. I, by the tide of hunger, would cut pay. I would love you ten years before the flood, and you should, if you please, refuse till the conversion of the Jews. Now, the Ganges, the Humber, the flood, those things had no meaning for us, but we loved reading Marvel's to his coy mistress. But looking back now, we see how far removed they were from our own reality and our own lives. Things became completely different when in the post-colonial years, from about the 1950s onwards, poetry by Sri Lankan writers emerged and their work began to be published in collections, in senior school textbooks, and were read widely. They were so dear to us that we lived that kind of poetry. They expressed our own thoughts, described our own situations, and our own dreams. When Yasmin Gunaratna writes of the way the jacaranda flowers patter the university pathways like purple rain, the picture is right in front of our eyes. Bima Marie van der Poten's poem on her father's death gives the exact picture of such situations we have all experienced. She writes, when my father died, my mother said, he did this to himself. The nurses said, it was inevitable. The blood bank said, we did our best. The doctors said, what did you expect? His friends said, you could always count on him. His relations said, I know, what a waste, not even 60. His daughter said nothing. Grief has no words. That's what these few examples I quote have, I have picked at random. Read 
Sakuntala's creation of all being poems and her street and startling revelations. Read Eva Ranavina, Alfreda de Silva, Richard de Soisa, and all those poems of the 60s and 70s. We find ourselves right within those situations, sharing the same emotions and problems, the same frustrations, the same aspirations, and the same dreams. And that is how I read Jayani's poems, delighting in those grimacing individuals clad in blue, armed with bats and balls, sneering with cricket plays or smiles. Written during the World Cup season in a bus, she asks, where else can get such perceptive details? There is a hole in her memory when she writes of a trip to Jaffna along the A9 into the Palmyra Rocks. The bullet map walls of a torn down past, the mounds of earth, the burning piles where corpses burn, the ravages of a once lovely city rise before our eyes. Chinese use of similes and comparisons prove the point I'm trying to make here. In her poetry, the similarities are here and now. In colonial residue, the worn skin tastes of like honey, sweet scented like pineapple, fragrant and tranquil like the temple flower. She doesn't go for stereotypes of white as snow or beautiful as an English rose. I thought I will read a bit of that poem. lighter than the rest, yet darker, much darker than what I was used to. She tasted like honey, her cocoa skin sweet scented, like coconuts and pineapple. Her luscious gypsy hair, cold and fragrant, tranquil like the temple flower. Another important thing I noticed in Jayani's poems is that she knows how to create the atmosphere, whether it is the revelations of a lazy Sunday afternoon or the seemingly casual comments of the woman whose lover has gone to another woman. I'm not a lender of perfumes to draw my fragrance on other women, she says. So please, wash yourself off me, set me free before you dash, dash, dash somebody else again. The economy of words matches the economy of emotion perfectly in these lines. Another comment I would like to make of Chinese poems, the way she economizes on her expressions. There is no going into harrowing details to take her reader from point to point. What has to be said is said briefly, succinctly, and meaningfully. When she writes of sadness, she carefully avoids the boulevard of beautiful memories and creeps on cis healthy rat's feet, leaving filthy prints on fading dreams and collapsed hopes. Taking Jayani's poem as a whole in this surface collection, I can please her by saying they are excellent poems. No, I won't say that, but I say most sincerely that there is plenty of promise in her writing and that she has laid the foundation of a better work with greater attention to detail and a wider look at the world which will come with experience and age. Having said that, I'd like to conclude these brief remarks with my favorite poem in this collection. Life happens in fits and starts, scattered are my thoughts, as are my words if I try to put together, and sometimes succeed, sometimes they rhyme, sometimes they don't. Some call it poetry, well, some don't, but usually it doesn't really matter. Thank you.
collection is really, really precious to me and there are pieces in here that I am completely in love with. So I want you uh, to hear some of these pieces and rather than me reading it, I think Mal would do a good job of it. So Mal, it's your turn. gates opened, inundated a city, crumbled a whole empire built by myself, for myself, and for another. Despite the debris, I feel clean. What with clogged up drains washed out once again, the dirt, the mucus, the piled up waste, breeding acid that was eating away at a corner of the soul, all washed away, washed away in the rain. I feel clean. No feelings were held back. No words left unsaid. Sentiments hurled out, thrown full, aimed high. Nothing kept back. I feel clean. Stripped bare naked, exposed my scars and the bleeding wounds to raging, roaring floods. I feel clean. Despite the debris and the devastation, I feel clean. Season of thoughts. Rainy season, soft, soggy fertility, breeding ground for fungus-like fantasies, budding in the mind like mushrooms, spreading like wet patches on walls, ultimately taking over. Inspiration leaks through like water through a leaking roof, breeding pleasure and pain. <coughs> it is easy to get lost in the mushy sweetness, surreal and sublime, and I succumb to the lines of black ants that run along the walls that are my thoughts, their tiny little feet tingling the skin with sensation, the thoughts heralding rain, 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 and no rain, I succumb to the tiny little feet, the fungus-like fantasies, and the wet patches on the walls, the rainy season takes over. Blue fleets and bathes the ground in mills juice.
fever. Water reminds me of death. Everywhere I walk is wet, wet, and wet, and slimy. <coughs> Clings to the soles, cuts through the skin, eats away at the flesh, sprouting chili bubbles on the skin. In my head crash a thousand meteorites. The mad axe man wax, wax, and wax away at the skull. Thousand hammers thump gleefully at a throbbing, squirting memento mori. Plants, tiny shivers of cold lightning sprouting within the leaves. And I lay half dead, but live. Live enough to feel the pain while the chill just numbs the other half of your brain. Um, so we are going to wrap things up now. Uh, before we wrap things up, I have a lot of people to thank. So I prepared this much. Um, first of all, uh, I want to say that this book is a collective effort, like this book as well as the event is a collective effort. And there are so many people to thank uh, who had supported me in various ways. Uh, first, I would like to thank Mr. Arturo Jaikadi of Surya Publishers for giving me the much needed guidance in the publishing arena. Thanks are next due to Mrs. Vijita Fernando, without whom I, would, I wouldn't have known which end was up, like seriously. Uh, thank you all the lovely ladies of the EWC who had always encouraged literary endeavors of all sorts and I must say that they had largely been responsible for me uh, to publish this book you served as an inspiration, so thank you. Warmest thanks to you, Chanudi, uh, uh, because of whom I have this absolutely lovely photo for the cover of my book. And thank you so much, Dinesh Ravindra Gunaratna, known as DRG, because of whom I have this beautiful color for the, uh, cover for the book. Thank you so much, you two. This cover might as well as be pulled out of my very own dreams. And you guys are the miracle workers, so thank you. Um, thank you so much, Shaman, uh, for that lovely, lovely music. And I'm sure you put a lot of people out of their misery of listening to me droning on and on. So, yeah, thank you so much for that. Um, Sarang Lakmalwet, the singer who prefers, apparently prefers, elephants to book launchers, who is not here today due to that same reason, uh, deserves a warm thanks for designing the poster for the event, as well as executing numerous minute details that went into the book, as well as the launch. Thank you, Ru Veeravarna, for the lovely lamp deco and looking after other little things of the launch that only an artistic eye can spot. Thanks also goes to uh, Dinusha Gamage, or Andy, as we call him, who had been another driving force behind this whole event. Thank you, Dilshi, a wonderful writer herself, for being the sweetheart that she is, uh, assisted me in every way that she could. Thanks also go out to my friends, colleagues and fellow writers. A very rare combination, I must say. Kamalika, Prasadini, Chamindra, Bhavani for practically everything from helping out whichever way they could so that I could have time to put together this little collection as well as this launch. My parents who are here today and my brother who unfortunately cannot be here today have been the principal driving forces behind all of this and just to thank you is not enough for their unconditional love, their self-sacrificing support, and many other things that they had given me throughout the years. Another such person is Charlie Jaitilaka, whose support and encouragement knew no bounds when it came to not only this, but in all other aspects of life. Last but not at all the least, thank you all so, so much, each and every one of you, for being here today. It's a Sunday evening and I know for a fact that some of you uh, had a very busy day and a week. And most of you would rather be at home sipping a cup of tea or getting ready for the week ahead. But uh, instead you chose to be here for me at this launch. And I consider that a very great honor and a very, very special thing. For every inspiration, good and bad, thank you so much. I hope you had as much, as, as much fun as I did. And what I now need is for you to read the book and provide me with honest feedback. So yes, you have some homework to do. So with that, we conclude the event. So uh, thank you very much and have a great week ahead. Thank you.